got a Christmas tree here. Oh crap! So let's look at what we got at the school. What the hell is going on here? All right, guys. So today we got a pretty cool one. So basically, the costume stays that they're they're concerned about multiple lights on. And as you can see, we got a Christmas tree here. So yeah, I believe definitely this one is gonna be interesting. So I'm gonna go now and check my scope. Oh, other thing, look. When I was driving the vehicle in, I noticed that I got no steering at all. It's like really hard to turn the steering wheel. So we definitely, we most likely have something related to the ABS, the EPS and those systems. So I'm gonna pull the scope now, the scanner. So let's go. So I already performed a full scan. As you can see, I had a, I have a few damping force control actuator. I have this torque zero, zero point adjustment undone and actuate the neutral position. And then all this loss communication with the brake system control module. And that's, that's definitely a problem. And this is gonna be our, our main focus. So I decided to then perform a communication boss check and if you look closely it says that currently communicating um, when their modules are communicating the color will be they will be in white uh, but then if they're not communicating it will be in red and you can see the skid control module or ABS control module is in red so that's definitely a confirmation that this module is not communicating and we need to find out why so since our main suspect is this ABS module, right? Since this is the one that is not communicating, we're gonna go and check the main feeds, the main fuses. And uh, we're gonna check this 50 amp, uh, this 30 amp fuse, this then this 50 amp fuse, then this 10 amp fuse. And then if the fuses are good, we will go directly and test right at the connector, check the main powers and grounds and all of that. So let's go. All right, so we're gonna start. I have my test light set up already. That's the ground. So we're gonna start by checking the fuses, the main fuses that we look in the wiring diagram and show you over here. So we got the 30 amp which is the one we look at the wiring diagram and we have this other one, this 50 amp. Uh, so we're gonna check both really quick. So let's locate it. So the 30 amp, I believe is, yeah, it's that one between the two, the 250. So it's this one right here. So let's take the cover off. Right there. So let's see what we got here. We got power, we got power. So we get a fast at 30 m this back the cover back so it should be good on this one let's move to the 50 amp yeah it's the last one after the 30 oh so it's gonna be this one right here let's test what we got here So we good as far as uh, the main fuses. So let's check this 10 amp fuse. See what we got here. It's gonna be here on the driver's side. Take this cover off. And we should have bolts and Looks like someone has been here already. So, so let me 
took off my test light. I'm gonna use this ground, this part, this as a ground, this metal part as a ground, it's connected to the frame, and let's go, go. drop, drop, oh crap, it's falling off. So I gotta connect it here. Let's now uh, go and test. Someone has been here definitely because look at this fuse, this is not the right size. But let's test the one that we're more concerned about, which is this one. We don't have nothing because I haven't turned the ignition. Let me turn the ignition. I always think about things like that. And compared to another one. So for example, if I have power here, I should have power on the one we're concerned about. Let's see, we got power. No, we got power. So we good. As far as the main fuses, So we know it good as far as the fuses that fit the ABS unit. So let's go and test directly at the ABS unit connector and see what we got there. So let's go and test directly. Oh, before, let me turn the ignition off and test directly at the ABS unit, which is right here. So we're gonna disconnect remove this connector and um, as I feel it's easier to front pro it so let's go and do that so what we're gonna do I'm gonna raise this you can do it by hand yeah so you lift this thing off and it's pretty easy to disconnect and boom have it out so let's look at the wiring diagram again and see where we need to test. So we confirmed that the main, uh, the feeds coming from the fuses are good. So we're gonna go now as we plan it and we're gonna test relate, relate um, directly at the connector. And we're gonna start with these two feeds and the pin number for them will be 38 and 13. If we go over here, we see 13 and 38, they're on top. So that's, that's where we need to test. So let's go and I'm gonna get it. Well, why I put the test light? Let me get the test light. We're gonna start by checking powers. Gonna hook up, use this as a ground, and to make sure it's good, gonna check here. So we know we got power. Let's now test right at the connector. So it's gonna be the top two top ones. Let's see. Good, we got power. And we got power. And let's now check check the ground. So we're now checking the grounds and it will be these two pins at the bottom. So in order to check the ground, I have my the way I'm gonna check it. I have my test light connected to point of the power pro. I'm gonna send power and then I have it connected to one of the grounds and then see if we got the ground. If we have a ground, it should light up. I'm gonna send power and we have so we have a good ground. So let's now check the other one. 
which is the one next to it. So even though it says it's lighting, it's green, I would like to power it up, load the circuit to be 100% sure. So yeah, we good. So both grounds are good. Now on next step, it's gonna be to check this pin right here, which is the another power fit. And that will be, will be this one, right? Sure. I believe it's gonna be this uh, third one. This one is the other power bit that I'm gonna show you on the wind iron. Let's see if we have power there. So the other power feed we're shaking will be this one right here and the pin is gonna be 12. And when we look at the connector view, it's actually on top. So another lesson, I always double check your warning diagram because it was actually the first one instead of the third one. So I always double check. So let's see if we have power or not. And boom, we have power there. So now what we have, what it's gonna be? Now we're gonna have to check the go to the buy that wiring diagram look at the network and use our scope so now we're going to check the network and in order to do that we're gonna connect uh, our scope leads at connectors at pins 22 and 10 uh, 22 is kind of high and 10 is kind of low so I have the scope set up already and uh, have Disconnected the or can light can 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 high can low so and um, have one lead to there and the other leads I connect I'm using these two grounds which I check I already I know are good so let's look at what we got at the school so we're checking the integrity of the network that can high can low and first thing is that they should mirror each other as you can see uh they're mirroring mirroring each other we have no missing signals and also the kind high should go as um especially when they're communicating like in this case uh we should have like 3.5 volts on the can high and 2.5 volts on the up to 2.5 on the can low and that's what we're getting here so this is a confirmation that we have communication and we have no issues on neither the can high or the can low but we tested here at pins 22 and 10 so and um, we still have to we also need to test at 37 and 36 I'm gonna show you guys that we have another communication line, other communication lines. So I have heard, I want to show you that they're also good. So you can see we got the same readings, uh, three, three and a half on the can high and two and a half on the can low. So we good here also. Guys, before making the final call, I wanted to show you one last check which is basically check the pins because yeah you might the connector might be good the feed to the connector might be good but what about the pins let me see if i can show you it's kind of hard to see but i expected them already most of them look pretty good. Let me see if I can show you. All right, guys, we got a new ABS unit installed. And now it's time to see if we made the right call or not. Let's see what's going on here. So I hook up the charger and look, the battery voltage is at six. So that's probably, that has to be the reason why it wasn't turning on. But let's see now, time for the truth. So 
I'm gonna start by clearing all the DTCs. Next step after installing a new ABS unit will be to uh, calibrate the sensors. So after doing the reset of the ABS unit, we still, let me turn, it, turn the ignition on, turn the engine on. We still don't have steering. So I just check on the, again, I, I already did the, as you saw, I calibrated the ABS unit and we still don't have the, you know, I did the programming calibration of all the sensors and all that, but look, we still don't have steering. So uh, I look at the codes and you saw we don't have on the EPA the electronic power steering we have this code so what I'm gonna do what we need to do is to do a torque sensor adjustment so let me show you so to perform the torque sensor adjustment we on the electronic power steering unit uh, menu we go to torque sensor adjustment and follow the prompts. Now after we just com complete the calibration of the steering wheel and look now we have power steering back. So thanks for watching guys, hope you like this case and see you on the next one.